whether you're in multifamily or commercial or, or single family, asset management's always involved. But for those who don't know what asset management is, can you explain what that is and maybe how it dif- differs from property management? So asset management is um, looking out for the owners and the investors for risk and cash flow and making sure they get the returns as represented to them. So, um, you know, in a nutshell, I used to say revenue minus expenses equals NOI, and then that gets split and that affects the valuation going forward. So what we're trying to do is enhance and improve and protect the cash flow and the sales price in the future uh, that was shown to the investors. And then that way the, the ownership is able to carry on uh, do business again with those investors and hopefully uh, look good in the process and <laughs> just doing what they say and protecting uh, the pro forma that was originally done. Okay. So th- how does that d- differ from property management? Property managers are hired at, for a fee. They typically do the leasing, the collection and pay the expenses and sometimes they have the accounting. So they're, what they're doing is a, a, a vital service to the property. Uh, they provide uh, Staffing, that, that being leasing, uh, representation on the property, and maintenance. And so uh, they provide the team and the customer service, and they're kind of the sticky part, the, the the human part that keeps the tenants there, if that makes sense. Yeah, and so th- they're the boots on the ground, whereas the asset manager is making sure that they're doing their job. Does, does that sound, sound fair? And executing uh, yeah, the plan. So- yeah, the, exit, the, the the asset manager is there to review uh, metrics, make sure the financial uh, performance matches what they are saying and that they are performing their work and providing the focus needed for that particular asset and uh, working behind the scenes on renovations, according to that with uh, you know new tenants. Uh, property management typically writes the leases for the tenants and they pay the bills for expenses uh, to take care of the property while they're there, and they are the representation. So uh, sometimes they stray outside of that, and um, asset manager's job is to bring them back into focus so they are able to perform on their core competencies, if that makes sense. Yeah, and so and anyone can be an asset manager, uh, or I guess one of, right when I saw that phrase, and I was kind of really trying to distinguish what it was, and you you really described it very well. But it kind of it kind of hit me. It's like if you had a single family property, because usually this term is in commercial real estate or multifamily. You don't really see this term unless you're talking about big portfolios of single family. But really, if you own a single rental property, and that property is being managed by a third party management company. You're an asset manager. It's basically what you are because you're making sure the property managers, or I mean, you should be at least, you're making sure the property manager's doing what they're supposed to be doing, right? Yeah. So a lot of owners start out doing their own asset management because uh, you own, you operate it as an owner, the same concerns. And then once they read a certain critical mass, a portfolio where they have, are spread too thin, they need somebody to help, kind of help get them to the next level or to peel off their um, responsibilities, they can go to a property management or an asset management person who oversees a property management company. And it's a duplication of themselves in a way. So uh, at at a certain point with portfolios, as they grow, asset managers become, um, it's it's a hard handoff for some owners, but uh, it, it is a point where they, there's an asset management fee, and then that fee goes to pay an asset manager to take over rather than the, the owner doing everything themselves being hands-on. So Yeah. You can and it's ultimately too. why, like, is, going back to, to single family, just, I mean, most people involved in real estate, are they're involved in the single family side. Um, it, it's why real estate rental properties or single family rental properties, they're not truly passive. I mean, they definitely have passive natures to them, but at the end of the day, you're always actively, even if you're not property managing the property, you're actively managing or managing the asset. Um, so you're an asset manager, which means like at the end of the day, the buck still falls on you um, to to solve some of the critical problems that, that can come up unless you bring in an asset manager right? and you build a portfolio and you bring someone in, then it can be a bit more passive. Does that, does that sound right? Um, correct. Yep, asset managers have the same, how can you say, task list as most owners. 
They were concerned with meeting the, the pro forma as it was underwritten, which means that there's rent growth typically, uh, making sure that the occupancy uh, is up and happening and who's accountable for that. That would be the property management company. And making sure the taxes are paid and the bills are paid and uh, knowing the details under the hood so that they can act on behalf of the ownership. Yeah. So, and then they also report back to the owner and their investors and provide, let's say, the market and what's going on. But typically they're brought in when the portfolios are big enough um, that the owners can justify paying an asset manager for their services. Mm -hmm. So uh, institutional people, it's a must. You know, there's there's a you know, football team of asset managers typically, and the portfolio is broken down. Call it gearing ratios. This is for debt, equity, and ownership. Um, I've managed up to 30, 40 properties. But then again, it matters uh, what the tasks on a daily, daily and monthly basis are. But uh, large institutional owners want the asset managers to touch their asset at least uh, two times a month and make sure things are going to per plan. And the ones that are in development or lease up or new, they require being touched every day. So it varies on the type of asset there is. So it, it is a mixed bag and there's various definitions of, of the term, what it is. You just kind of have to look and see what, what is needed by the ownership. Yeah. And from an asset manager standpoint, you, you mentioned 30 properties or so. Is that 30 like multifamily communities or is that 30 uh, like single families or? Um, yeah, so I worked for AIG Sun America and MMA Financial. They did equity and debt for multifamily, some affordable, some market rate. And so they had total company wide, let's say 150 in process at any one time. And each asset manager would take on about 30 if, if there was a construction component because it took more uh, hands on work. Once they become stabilized and cash flowing with, with a stabilized loan, those asset managers handled up to 70 and 80. And it was all automated and checks and balances, uh, making sure that, um, you know, things from the ownership side were taken care of. And that's kind of an extreme case. 70 to 80 is a big load. So um, younger, you know, that right now there's a lot of upstarts in, in ownerships and the portfolio sizes of less than 10. Uh, those owners are, uh, let's say, 10 single family rentals. That's about the time we bring in an asset manager because they're looking for growth. And mm -hmm. asset manager is a growth agent where you can automate and get things um, all pulled together and, and the quality of data and performers, and they want to acquire more. So asset management tends to dovetail and overlap with acquisitions, and it dovetails and overlaps with accounting and uh, all the consultants and the tax base and uh, and getting the grant the growth plans and the, and the NOI growth from year to year to happen with certainty. So there's strategies to get that to happen. And we look at all of that. So um, it is a big topic and, but there are various uh, scopes and varieties of asset managers. You just have to ask the question, how detailed and how experienced they are. <laughs> and it seems like it's a, per <laughs> it's, it's like a, a dream job uh, for someone who, Loves numbers, loves projections, loves seeing those play out, uh, Excel graphs, charts, um, especially when it's tied to something that, that's real um, that you could actually touch to and uh, something interesting like like real estate. So, um, yeah, so you have, yep. So it, you have to look at, you have to see the forest before the trees. You have to look at the details and back up and see, is this going the right direction? and provide an overall strategy and, and course correction if need be for the property managers who may be able to see it. But in most cases, they are very much, how can you say, very close to what they're doing and need some guidance and yeah. some strategy. 